Right. Notice the car over here and watch how as it moves to the right, it doesn't notice that there's a white truck over here. And what happens is because it doesn't know that it hits straight right into the white truck and the truck behind it that's recording this video just completely runs over the car. Humans most used transportation is cars. But in reality, more than 1.35 million people die from them every year. And more than 50 pe million people are casualties of these car accidents every year. That's literally like saying, if I took every single person in Spain and put them in a car, every single person would either come back home injured from a car accident or they would come home dead. But the fact is we can actually fix this. Self-driving cars have the potential to save these 1.35 million lives every year. And if 90% of car accidents come from human error, then that means that the implementation of self-driving cars themselves can save 90% of lives. So kind of going back to this video, what if we equip the car with a camera and a few radar sensors to detect that the truck was coming? What if we, what if we develop some sort of lane detection algorithm that could have stopped the car from crossing lanes resulting in the collision not even happening at all? Well, I created an artificial intelligence algorithm to detect car lanes when driving. And the way I did this is through a process known as semantic segmentation. And basically what this means is in this example GIF here, we can see that the car is driving and as it drives, it classifies objects in a certain group. So here, uh, cars are classified in blue, people are classified in red, trees are classified in green, et cetera. And in my case, I would have uh, road images that would be classified into lane. So this is an example of an image of my data set where I'm given a road line and I'm given the corresponding label with it. So the way I did this is through the unit architecture. I think Tenzin explained it really well, but basically the way the unit architecture works is we apply uh, operations such as convolutions and max pooling. And what we do after that is whenever we use a CNN, our output's a label. So if I gave it an image of a cat, I would get an output of a label. But in this case, we want an output to be another image. So what we do is we do like the opposite of a convolution, which is known as upset. Like, so instead of get, uh, ending the convolution here after performing it, we do the opposite and generate the new image. So kind of speaking about convolutions, generally what a convolution is, is that it kind of down samples and downscales the image to a lower quality while being able to learn features from it. So for example, if I had this image here of a house, this would be an image of a house after the convolution. So although it's a lot less, it's the quality of it is a lot lower, the, we can still tell that it's a house. And the way the model learns is through the features. And basically these features are kind of dimensions. And what happens is whenever we pass in an image, it will learn that, okay, so for example, in the spaces category, it might notice that, oh, okay, if there's an E on the left or is it, or if there's some sort of circle shape on the left side of the image, then that might be a human. If it was a car, what if there was a circle at like the bottom left and the bottom right, then that's a car. So these are certain features or dimensions that the model learns from. The other operation we perform is something known as max work. And what this does is that it takes the maximum value given a certain kernel size. So in this case, we have this blue filter that scans across the image. And what happens is we take the maximum value of it. So for example, if we have this image here that is 120 by 120 and it's an image of a line, our max pooled image would be 12 by 12. And even though it looks more like a Minecraft dinosaur, I think we can all tell that it's, it's a line. So kind of going back to UNET, what we do here is we perform a convolution. So we do two convolutions followed by max pooling. And then we kind of repeat that process until we hit bottom up, which is over here, which is 28 by 28 by 1024 of an image. And then what we do is we upset it. So we do the complete opposite of a convolution. So instead of making the image smaller, we make the image bigger by scanning the three by three image in this case. And our output would now become a five by five. So after performing all of this, this is kind of where the unit comes from. So in this uh, section of the model, it learns about the model and the certain features. And then in the other half, it tries to generate what the predicted output label might be. So in this case, it will try to learn that, oh, maybe these white dotted lines in the middle might be lane lines. And as it learns, it'll realize that, okay, the background and the trees don't matter. I just need this. So after going through training and whatnot, uh, this is the predictions that I kind of got. As of right now, I'm currently working on implementing it in my car, but after training, these are kind of the example predictions that I'm getting. So after passing in this input image here, this is the actual label. So this is what's the correct label. And this is what the model predicts. So for this image, this is what it predicts the lines are, which isn't too bad if I were to say so myself. So just as a final thought, instead of having to worry about your parents and family from coming home from work every day, 
the technology of self-driving cars and autonomous vehicles will really allow us to not being able to worry about whether they'll come home safely. And instead, it'll guarantee us that they'll be able to come home safely. Thank you.